Good evening. If you've tuned in tonight expecting the outstanding race that the San Marino Grand Prix here at Imola promised to be, then I'm sorry that's not the programme we have for you. Instead, the sport of Formula One tonight is in deep mourning. Yesterday we had the loss of Roland Ratzenberger, the first Formula One racing fatality for 12 years. And today we've lost, arguably, the greatest talent of his generation. After a high-speed crash at Tamborello, Ayrton Senna is dead. Like Ratzenberger yesterday in Barrichello on Friday, it was a violent accident and its cause remains a mystery. There was enormous shock around the circuit, but for a while there was hope. Senna was seen to move. He required a great deal of attention at the crash site and was then taken by helicopter to Maggiore Hospital in Bologna and straight into intensive care. And when the first bulletins were issued, the hope started to fade. Senna had grave head injuries, was in a coma for a while, his heart stopped beating. He was revived, but at 6.30 local time came the news that Senna was clinically dead. The last hope was gone, a great star was lost. The San Marino Grand Prix weekend had begun with the dramatic accident that Rubens Barrichello miraculously survived with only minor injuries. But the next day, the miracles ran out, and Roland Ratzenberger, in only his second Grand Prix, became the first race-meeting fatality that Formula One had suffered in 12 years. The next was tragically barely 24 hours away. And race day today had other potential tragedies. At the start, Pedro Lamy in the Lotus failed to avoid a stalled JJ Leto. A tyre flew into the crowd, injuring eight spectators, none seriously. Both drivers were unhurt. Later in the afternoon, a tyre and bodywork flew off Michele Alboreto's Minardi as it sped out of the pit lane. Four mechanics, two from Ferrari, two from Lotus, needed hospital treatment. So it's been a dreadful day and the loss of Ayrton Senna is really tough to comprehend. He qualified yesterday with his 65th pole position of his career. If he'd gone on to take the victory that everyone predicted, it would have been his 42nd in Grand Prix motor racing. He was three times a winner here at San Marino. He was three times a world champion. Here's the thoughts of our commentary team. Murray Walker, an overwhelming sense of sadness here today. What kind of talent, what kind of star? has the sport lost today? Well, I can still hardly comprehend that it's, it's happened, Steve. I remember Ayrton Senna, and it seems terrible to have to use those words, as a, a tremendously intense man who was determined to achieve his goals. He came here as an unknown Brazilian who couldn't speak English. He came to a cold climate. He, he lived a long way away from home, and he applied himself 1,000% to his craft. He succeeded in all the categories that he was in until he got to Formula One. He very nearly won a Grand Prix in his first year. He then went on to become a three times world champion. And as far as I'm concerned, and I do see all of them, he was a man who was always courteous, always considerate, uh, always helpful, and he was a man of his word. If you wanted to talk to him, he would say, yes, come and see me after qualifying, and you might have to wait a long time, but you always got him. Uh, on, on top of that, he was uh, a tremendously successful businessman. He was m much loved by his family and all his friends around him. Uh, and it is a truly dreadful, dreadful blow to motorsport. You've seen most of the great Grand Prix drivers there have been. Where would you place Ed and Senna among those? Oh, I would uh, unhesitating, unhesitatingly place him in the top three. I think I, I would place him with... Uh, Nuvolari and uh, with Jim Clark and I would put Sterling Moss in the same bracket but you can't speak about many drivers in the same breath as you can Ayrton Senna. How does the sport now handle a loss if it can? Uh, Formula One has an image problem now? Well what I'm going to sa say Steve may sound callous and I don't mean it to but Grand Prix racing, motor racing is uh, an ex extremely dangerous sport. It always has been, it always will be, it's in the nature of the sport. The drivers who take part in it know that something like this in their heart of hearts could happen to them. They wouldn't do it if they, if, if they knew it was going to happen to them, but they accept the risks because the passion is worth the risk. And that's what they want to do, and I, I don't think anything ought to be done to stop them. 
it's happened in the past, it will happen again. Uh, all I can say is that it has happened on this occasion to a, a truly great man, and although it's a cliché, he will be desperately, desperately missed, and, and Formula One is going to be stunned for the whole of the rest of this season. Jonathan Palmer, amid all the great sadness, the sport has to ask itself, why have there been two fatalities in just two days? There must be a reason. That's certainly a logical question, but I can't help thinking that it is the most tragic of coincidence overall. I think it's important to recognise that from what we know, neither of these two accidents had anything to do with drivers wrestling with their cars, trying to overdrive it and losing control purely through trying to go quickly. I think in both situations, in both circumstances, something has broken, possibly with the car, possibly some debris on the circuit, possibly a tyre. There has been some outside influence rendering the driver no chance of controlling the vehicle and with the very high speeds that we see here in Imola, plus the fact that those high speeds are seen on swerving parts of the circuit, the car will almost certainly go off the road and hit the concrete walls on either side. But we talked before the race, uh, with the change in regulations, there are new and greater demands on drivers this year. Yes, there are. We've seen changes in regulations removing active suspension, which only had one year of prevalence in Formula One after all. You know, we've been using the sorts of, the sorts of suspension that we have now for decades in the past. So uh, non-active suspension is not new. And indeed, nor is uh, getting rid of traction control. Traction control is undoubtedly an aid to safety in the same way that ABS braking is an aid to safety under braking. Um, but of course, it does remove driver influence. And it's always been very important to Formula One to have the driver being in as much control of the car as possible and his skills influencing the car's performance. But again, that kind of, those kind of changes, particularly removing traction control, sure has meant the cars have been harder to drive, but really at the slower parts of the circuit, it's easier to spin the cars. But once again, I emphasize that these two incidents had nothing to do with drivers losing control of their vehicles while pushing them to the limit. In both circumstances, the cars left the road when they should have been capable of rounding the corners without any problem whatsoever, well within the limits of both the drivers and the cars. Something went wrong in both occasions. You raced against Ayrton Senna. What a great talent the sport has lost today. It's absolutely devastating. I think everybody is totally numb about the thing. Um, to my mind, he was the best driver Grand Prix racing had ever seen. Different people have different views, but I think the, the guy was quite exceptional and is a dreadful loss to the world of motorsport. There'll be more on a great racing driver in a special tribute programme at 2.20 on Wednesday afternoon, BBC Two. We had a race today, two-part race, in which Michael Schumacher made it three wins out of three for Benetton. Nicola Larini added some joy to the day with second place for Ferrari, Hacken and third for McLaren, with Damon Hill completing the top six. Schumacher now dominates the World Championship with maximum points from the first three rounds. The next round in Monaco in two weeks' time takes place without one of Monaco's most famous residents, Ayrton Senna. As a result, there was no champagne on the podium after the race this afternoon. There really was nothing to celebrate, even for Michael Schumacher. Just win the race, but I can't feel satisfied, can't feel happy. I mean, what happened this weekend, never have seen something like this. Not just one thing, so many things. The only thing I can say about this is I hope we learn from this. I think there is a lot to learn from, and we have to use this. And things like this, they shouldn't happen without taking the experience from it. It's the only thing I want to say and I can say. I've known Ayrton Senna and had the genuine pleasure of interviewing Ayrton Senna ever since his early days in Formula Ford and Formula 3 back in the early 80s. And to my mind, he was one of the most talented, motivated, focused and lucid sportsmen that I've ever come across. Formula One this evening is mourning the loss of not one, but two drivers, Roland Ratzenberger and Ayrton Senna.